school and boys in composition With a crime in the small these days This ain't no place for children Lord, it sounds so easy Shouldn't take them long We'll be back in a month In no time at all He's gone country Look at them boots He's gone country Back to his roots He's gone country New kind of suit He's gone country Yeah, here he comes Yeah, he's gone country New kind of walk He's gone country Oh, back to his roots, he's gone country Little Alan Jackson right there Mind if I play you a new song? And by a new song, this is only probably the second time I've ever done this live. Yeah, good. I love that. There's a lot of enthusiasm happening right here. And when these boys get up on here, up here on stage, we're going to need a whole lot more enthusiasm in out of that crowd. Can we do that? So, like I mentioned, I got a double album coming out, and uh, this song is probably going to be the lead single off of that. We're still trying to figure out exactly what our program is going to be. Um, but man, this is definitely one of my favorites off of it. It's called Bombs Away. Here we go. Why we gotta be so dang bad for each other? Up and off again, off again, nobody ever wins love. friends to know we don't want to be in love so why we gotta be so dang bad for each other we've been up and down this road we both know where it goes don't we beg tell me don't it feel so right we got nothing to lose we're good at lighting the fuse this whole news like holding on to dynamite in my go up in flames it might blow up right in my face oh, but I'm on my way baby bombs away yeah. we both know that we're probably never gonna find forever oh, but all that I want is another last time Together, yeah. We can write the book on getting it wrong. Can't turn it off, so might as well turn it on. We both know that we're probably never gonna find forever, yeah. We've been up and down this road, we both know where it goes, don't we bet? But tell me, don't it feel so right? We got nothing to lose, we're good at lighting the fuse, cause holding you. Like holding on a dynamite It might go up in flames It might blow up right in my face I'll put them on my way Baby, bombs away yeah. Baby, bombs away Just pretend this time it's gonna work We've been up and down this road We both know where it goes, don't we, baby? But tell me, don't it feel so right? We got nothing to lose We're good at lighting the fuse Cause holding use Like holding on a dynamite It might go up in flames It might blow up right in my face Oh, but I'm on my way Baby, bombs away yeah. Baby, bombs away oh, oh. Thank you all.
just sounds dead. Oh, give me that kick. That's a little better. Mm -hmm. All right, back in business. There we go. <laughs> you guys might play play a couple more. I got about ten minutes. Is that cool with y'all? So let me ask you guys. Tuesday night, we're out here in Powder Springs getting ready to celebrate the next great senator from the state of Georgia, Mr. Herschel Walker. We're going to have Senator Cruz in the house, Senator Graham in the house. Would you guys like one of my songs right now, or do you guys want a sing-along song right now to really get people amped up? I like that idea, too. I wish I could play that song acoustic. That song's so daggum hard acoustic. But this one isn't. Blame it on my roots. I showed up notes and ruined your black tie affair. Last one, no. Last one, show. Sure. I was the last one you thought you'd see there. And I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes When I took his glass of champagne I toasted you and said, honey, we may be through But you'll never hear me complain Here we go! Cause I got friends in low places Where the whiskey trends and the beer chases my blues away I'll be okay. Uh, here it comes. Yeah, I'm not big on social graces. Think I slip on down to the. Yeah, oh, I got friends in low places. Now, I'll tell you, for a Tuesday night crowd, that was pretty good. But I think we can do a little better. Here we go. Well, I guess I was wrong. I just don't be alone. And well, I've been there for everything's alright. I'll just say goodnight and I'll show myself to the door. Hey, I didn't mean to cause a big scene. Just wait till an hour and then. Well, I'll be signs that I. Tower that you're living in, cause I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and beer chases my blues away. Yeah, and I'll be okay. Right, here we go. Yeah, I'm not big on. So crazy, think I'll slip on down to the Oh, I got friends in lower places. One more time, here we go. Yeah, I got friends in low places where the whiskey trends and beer chases my blues away. I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not big on souls. Graces think I slip on down to the OS. So I got friends in low places. Well, I've got friends. 
here in Powder Springs, Georgia, Lone Place. You guys are awesome, man. Probably one more, I think. Huh? One more? So guys, I got one more before we get tonight underway. Again, my name's Andy Velo. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. And uh, you can find all my music on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to music. Uh, A-N-D-Y-V-E-L-O. And uh, would love to connect with you guys on socials. Um, this song right here is real special to me. Uh, I put this song out in March. And it was the only song that I put out this year. And uh, actually, um, Fox News picked it up, and you'll hear it from time to time coming in and out of their programming. Um, and I got to, again, thank 94.9 The Bull because they are the first radio station in the country that's playing this song and playing it on a regular basis. Um, but I wrote this song from a very honest, uh, honest place. And um, I think there's a few in the crowd that uh, are going to agree with me on this, on the lyrics in this song. The song's called Dying Breed. Here we go. Granddaddy drank bourbon and mama drank wine. Daddy'd whip my ass if I stepped out of line. You either won or you lost, but nobody tied. And my feelings ain't hurt. Hell, I turned out just fine. Well, the truck that I drive is American made. The sweat on my shirt's keeping all the bills pay. Stars and stripes still fly, and Jesus still saves. And I'll kneel for one and stand when the other one waves. But if I'm the last of a dying breed, I'll sure go out swinging and showing my teeth. Heaven help the soul world and where it all leads. If I'm the last of a dying breed, if I'm the last of a dying breed, there's a barbed wire fence round my whole property line. There's holes in my wranglers and mud on my tires. There's a steel in my country and a gun on my side. And if you'd like to take them, you're welcome to try. But if I'm the last of a dying breed, I'll sure go out swinging and showing my teeth. Heaven help the soul world and where it all leads. If I'm the last of a dying breed. Yeah. This verse is the most important one. Here we go. Bless the boots on the ground here at home and overseas. One nation under God, we will always be. I don't know about you, but I like being free. If that pisses you off, hell, that's fine by me. Because if I'm the last of a dying breed, I'll sure go out swinging and showing my teeth. Heaven help the soul world and where it all leads. If I'm the last of a dying breed, and if I'm the last of a dying breed, let me live out my days and then bury me deep in American clay where my heroes all sleep. If I'm the last of a dying breed, if I'm the last of a dying breed. God bless you guys. Thank you.
My name is Pastor Frankie. I'm a pastor in Smyrna, Georgia, and I'm going to do our invocation tonight, getting ready for Herschel to come. Are you all excited tonight? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you said in your word, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, and when the unrighteous are in authority, the people mourn. So we ask you tonight, Father, for a righteous invasion of truth, and we thank you that Herschel is a righteous leader. He is the voice that you've chosen, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We thank you, Lord God, that in this hour, the church is uniting of, of all faiths together to rise up against un immorality and wickedness and to call a, a, a an outpouring of your spirit and so father we pray the protection over him we thank you for the festivities this evening we thank you that this is a pre celebration to the inevitable victory because your hand is on Herschel and his family and so we thank you for these things we give you praise in Jesus mighty name everybody shout run Herschel run <laughs> Hello everyone, great to be with you tonight. My name is Dave Carmichael, I'm the chairman of the Paulding County Board of Commissioners and we love our country or we love America and we love Herschel Walker. So let's pledge the flag together as, as we're so thankful that we live here in this country. I pledge allegiance by public Hey, good evening, Paul. So, so, <laughs> how y'all doing? Hey, I'm truly honored here. But one thing I'm going to ask you, why are you here? There you go. There's a reason why you are here in this nice chilly night. There's a reason for that. And I'll tell you my reason. I started my career with the Atlanta Police Department. I walked the footbeat. I was shot in the line of duty serving my, this great city of Atlanta because I knew somebody had my back. And right now we have two senators who don't have our back. If you're law enforcement officer, you're having doubts. And that's what's causing all these problems, a lot of law enforcement right now. We have folks that don't have our back. And that's why Herschel and the rest of this team needs your help. We need to have Herschel's back. All right? I'm also a National Guard soldier. And I know what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the fact that the way we left Afghanistan was criminal. There's no other way to describe that. Why? Because we did not have strong leaders in Washington. I'll tell you, we t you hear a lot of no nonsense about vaccines and, and, and all this stuff. We need a vaccine against the nonsense going on in Washington, D.C. And that vaccine is called Herschel Walker. We need to make sure we're out here talking to folks. Let's get folks out to vote. God bless y'all. Thank y'all.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would remove your caps as we sing our nation's great national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale love's fight o'er the we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rockies red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Let me tell you guys something. You know, every time I go out to speak, everybody want a sound bite. I'm going to give you a sound bite really quick. Ooh. I'm sick and tired of people putting this country down. They want to ask me why I'm running. Let's be real. I'm sick and tired. You look at the economy. You look at the gas prices. You can't buy grocery now. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for me to get out and fight. Because I'm going to tell you, I love to win. I said, put me in the game, coach. I'm ready to play. Have you ever seen me play? I can play. Have you ever seen me fight? I can fight. No matter how hard they come, the harder I can fight. Boom! I'm sick and tired of this. Tell your friends to get out, get, out, get out and vote. I'm not here to be a politician. I'm here to be a warrior. Protect this country, protect our citizens, and protect our kids. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. Boom! That's it, baby!
Jimbo, Bert Jones, and I thank you for allowing me to be your next Lieutenant Governor. So I appreciate all y'all's support. I appreciate all those that went out and voted for me and those who did not. I will continue to pray for you over Thanksgiving. <laughs> Because I know you just led astray, but that's all right. But I tell you what, I am fired up about getting Herschel Walker elected to the United States Senate. How about y'all? Herschel and I, everybody gets us confused, I know, but we both played at the University of Georgia. I have to tell folks, I didn't win the Heisman, I promise you. <laughs> They say, well, when did you and Herschel play together? I said, he was 20 years before me, you know. Wife always told me, she said, well, you look good for 60, Bert. Just think of it that way. But I want to tell you something. I am fired up that we have so many great people coming from all over the country who are, who are trying to save this country. And I want... I want to tell you right now, if you want somebody who's going to be a law and order candidate, you want somebody who's going to be tough on our, closing our borders and protecting our borders and protecting the American way, then we got to get Herschel Walker elected. I'm telling you. This election is going to, all, it's going to be all about turnout. So we have got to turn out. We've got to turn out in a big way. We've got to get our friends. We've got to get our families. If you don't have any friends, go make one between now and next week and, and get them out to vote right away. And I am so excited tonight. A man that I have known for several years now. I get to introduce him. Somebody I've looked up to and admired from afar. He's a good friend from the great state of Texas. Okay. Please give a warm Georgia welcome to our set, our good friend and Senator Ted Cruz, ladies and gentlemen. God bless the great state of Georgia. Let me say, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. We've got a lot to be thankful for. We're thankful that we live in the greatest country on the face of the earth. We're thankful that we're Americans. And we're thankful that Georgia's fixing to elect a new senator. Let me tell you, at a time of Thanksgiving, makes me think of Washington, D.C., because there are a whole lot of turkeys up there. <laughs> and right now today, the entire country, the eyes of the nation are on the great state of Georgia. Look, we find ourselves once again in a runoff here in Georgia. And the direction of the country is going to be decided by the men and women of Georgia. Now let me ask you something. Is this country on the right track today? Yes. You look at what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Chuck Schumer and Betsy Pelosi have done. Every single thing they touch turns to garbage. You got inflation out of control. Cost of everything. Cost of food through the roof, cost of health care, cost of electricity, cost of lumber, cost of rent, cost of mortgages, cost of gasoline. Look, it's so bad, Antifa can't afford bricks. It is so bad, Eric Swalwell can't afford Chinese dinners. <laughs> In fact, I got to tell you, inflation is so bad right now, Hunter Biden can't afford crack cocaine. <laughs> and then you got crime. Crime out of control, murder rates skyrocketing, carjacking rates skyrocketing. It's what happens when you have Democrat after Democrat attack and demonize the police and argue for abolishing the police and defunding the police and putting in place George Soros prosecutors that let violent criminals go. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, the men and women of Georgia support the heroes of law enforcement. Yeah. 
And then we've got illegal immigration. The worst illegal immigration in the history of our country. Under Joe Biden, five million people have crossed into this country illegally. It is horrific. Now listen, I've been down to the border many times, gone out on midnight patrol with Border Patrol agents. One time I was there a few years ago, they came to a stash house, kicked open the door. There's some big sketchy guys in that stash house, tatted up. And the Border Patrol agents, they're all calling over to me. They're going, Senator, Senator, come over here. I'm going, Ixnay on the editor say. <laughs> J just call me Bob. <laughs> Last time I was there, it was a few months ago, I brought seven senators down to go out on midnight patrol. You don't have to look for people crossing illegally. Within minutes, they find you. Women, children, when we were there with a bunch of senators, we saw a dead body floating the Rio Grande River. Border Patrol agents showed us where two little girls had been sexually assaulted just a couple of weeks earlier by the traffickers. You sit down with Texas farmers and ranchers, they show you picture after picture of dead bodies they find on their property. And you know what? Joe Biden and Raphael Warnock and the corrupt corporate media, none of them care at all. Until 50 illegal immigrants showed up in Martha's Vineyard. And suddenly the white bread, hypocritical, lily-livered, billionaire socialists discovered they had a problem. Now, the press will tell you all these problems, they got nothing to do with all these Democrats running Washington. That's called a lie. Because I'll tell you, every one of those problems Raphael Warnock voted to make worse. When you look at inflation, the Democrats came in and they spent trillions and trillions of dollars. This past year, federal government raised about $4 trillion in tax revenue, the most taxes federal government has ever raised in history. Only problem is, federal government spent nearly $7 trillion. You know what Raphael Warnock voted for? Every single penny of that. You know what else Raphael Warnock voted for? 87,000 new IRS agents to descend on the people of Georgia, to persecute the people of Georgia. We need to stand up and say not one cent will go to those 87,000 IRS agents. And you ask me personally, I think we ought to abolish the IRS. Move to a simple flat tax and fill out your taxes on a postcard. When it comes to crime, President Biden has nominated not one, not two, but three of the leading advocates in the country of abolishing the police to senior positions of the Department of Justice. And Raphael Warnock voted to confirm not one, not two, but three. On the southern border, Raphael Warnock has voted over and over and over again against building a wall, against securing our border, against stopping Chinese fentanyl from flowing into this country and killing people here in Georgia. Y'all are fixing to do it. Let me tell you something. There is no state in the country with a greater divide between the values of the men and women of the state and the senator that represents them. Georgia is a conservative state. Georgia is a common sense state. Georgia is a freedom state. Georgia is a red state. And Raphael Warnock, every single time, votes against the people of Georgia 
and votes with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi to give up your liberties. Now, media has tried to convince Republicans that it doesn't matter what happens here in Georgia. Let me tell you, this race matters enormously. This race matters for a whole lot of reasons. I wish we were sitting here fixing to take the majority. We're not. I'm ticked off about that. But you know what? The time to fix that is in two years. Right now, we're going to decide whether the Senate stays 50-50 or whether the Democrats get 51 Democrats. Let me tell you what happens if they get 51 Democrats. Number one, they get a majority on every single committee. That means they could accelerate, they could expedite their agenda, including radical left-wing judges, to take away our free speech, our religious liberty, and our Second Amendment. But I'll tell you what else it means. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats want to end the filibuster. They tried over the last two years. They came two votes short. Two Democrats said no. Joe Manchin from West Virginia, Kirsten Sinema from Arizona. If Warnock wins this race, Schumer is one vote away from ending the filibuster. And I believe if that happens, that Schumer will lean on Manchin and Manchin will fold. And let me tell you something, what that means for Georgia, here's what the Democrats want to do if they end the filibuster. They want to strike down every election integrity law in the country. They want to register millions of illegal aliens to vote. They want to strike down photo ID. They want to mandate that all criminals can vote. You can actually understand the latter because after all, they got to take care of their base. They also want to make the District of Columbia a new state so they get two new Democrat senators. They also want to make citizens over 10 million illegal aliens to vote for Democrats. And they want to pack the U.S. Supreme Court and put four left-wing justices on the court immediately. That's what Georgia's deciding. And so I'm here to tell you, y'all have an opportunity to make a choice. Make a choice not just for Georgia, but for the whole country. There are 49 other states that are looking to Georgia right now. And let me tell you, you guys have a fantastic candidate for United States Senate. I've been to Georgia multiple times supporting Herschel Walker. Herschel is beloved in the state of Georgia. And I got to say, have y'all noticed this race has gotten a little nasty? I want you to think for a second. Why is Herschel doing this? I mean, talk about a life. Look, Herschel is incredibly successful. He's the greatest college football player to ever play. He's famous and beloved, and he's real famous, not fake famous, Lindsay, like politics. He's real famous. And suddenly, he's got these communists spending millions of dollars lying about him, dragging him and his family through the mud. It is ugly. I want you to ask you, how many of you would want your family to go through this garbage? And there's one and only one reason Herschel Walker is doing this, because he loves America. And because our country is in crisis, and we need leaders with backbone and guts. The runoff is on December 6th. Between now and December 6th, Every one of y'all needs to go to TeamHerschel.com, 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 and give money. But then here in Georgia, I am looking at the men and women that are going to decide the future of liberty in America. On December 6th, 
I want to ask every one of you to come out and vote for Herschel Walker ten times. All right, now look, now look, we're not Democrats. I am not urging voter fraud, although I saw two reporters pull out their notepads, say, oh, look, urging multiple felonies from the stage. Let me tell you how you do that. You make sure you come out and vote on December 6th. And then, tonight, when you leave, pull out your phone. Pull up your contacts. Scroll through and find nine other people. And send them a text tonight. Send a text to your sister. Send a text to your coworker or your next door neighbor. Send a text to your son. Say, listen, this election matters. I'm scared for the direction of our country. I don't like the direction that Biden and Schumer and Pelosi are taking this country. And you can say, I know Herschel Walker. Don't believe the lies. And let me tell you right now. If you get nine other people to vote on election day who wouldn't have voted otherwise, you just voted ten times. This election is all about turnout. It's all about showing up to vote, and it is y'all who are going to decide. Let me say one final thing. You notice who hadn't come to the state of Georgia to campaign with Raphael Warnock? Joe Biden, I'm going to make an invitation. We got TV cameras in the back. Joe Biden, I invite you, come to Georgia, stand next to Raphael Warnock and say, this man supports every policy I support. I'm going to make another invitation. Kamala Harris, come to Georgia, campaign with Raphael Warnock. Let me make another invitation. Chuck Schumer, come to Georgia. Campaign with Raphael Warnock. And one last invitation. Nancy Pelosi. You suddenly got a whole lot of free time on your hands. Come to Georgia. Campaign with Raphael Warnock. And you know why they're not going to? Because their values don't reflect the values of the men and women of Georgia, and neither does Warnock, but Raphael, but neither does Warnock, but Herschel Walker does, and he'll fight for you. I now have the joy of introducing a friend of mine, Senator from the great state of South Carolina, a man who's very shy, he never has anything to say, and just once it'd be nice if he could tell a joke. He's so dang boring, but I'm going to ask you all to help us coax him out of his shell, see if we can get a smile out of him. I give you my friend, Senator Lindsey Graham. <laughs> There's alcohol on the bus. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm from South Carolina. You know why I'm here? I'm tired of having my vote canceled out by two liberal senators from Georgia. Let's fix that, okay? You know how I got to South Carolina? My parents were born in Georgia. If you don't pay your bills here, you wind up in South Carolina. <laughs> You know why I'm behind Herschel? I'm tired of being run over by Herschel. <laughs> I followed South Carolina football all my life, and I've learned you don't want to get in front of Herschel Walker. This is a good year to be a Georgia Bulldog, don't you think? I can't believe I said that, but I did. I'm going to wear Georgia Bulldog stuff, and that ain't easy. So as Ted said, how about a round of applause for Ted for being a solid, consistent, great conservative? Thank you. You know, he, you know, I lived two hours from here. He had to fly all across the country. And a story about, you remember the Alamo? You know why you remember it? Everybody got killed. <laughs> but, but, that's the bad news. The good news is we're still talking about them, right? The number two people, the first guy and the second guy at the Alamo, came from 
South Carolina. So the next time somebody from South Carolina comes to lead you, say no. <laughs> but they left South Carolina to go to Texas to fight for freedom. Ted left Texas to come to Georgia to preserve freedom. I came here because I understand what is at stake, but I just want to say this. I've come to really admire Herschel Walker and his family. How about a round of applause for him and his family who've put up with all this crap? How many of you voted for Kim? How many of you believe Kemp's got Georgia on the right track? Yeah. Question for Georgia. Why the hell would you send Warnock to Washington? Yeah. Anybody ever been in a rowboat? If I row one way and you row the other, where are we going? Nowhere. How about Herschel being in the boat rowing for Georgia? Yeah. You'll be in France in about an hour. <laughs> you won't ruin the boat. <laughs> Herschel. Herschel's going to row the boat with Kemp to make you safer, to make you more prosperous. It would be crazy, in my view, for the state of Georgia to elect a conservative governor and send one of the most liberal people to Washington to represent you. That makes no sense. We figured that out in South Carolina. So the bottom line is, this matters to the people of Georgia, it matters to my family, it matters to everybody in the United States. I dare say there's no more important time for America and Georgia than right now. You're the only thing between chaos and freedom. Schumer said this week a 50-50 Senate would slow him down. Here's my message, let's slow Schumer down. So, it's tough being a conservative, don't you think? Everybody's against you. How about being a conservative woman? That's tough. Being pro-life, you get marginalized, right? Okay, how about being a conservative like Tim Scott and Herschel Walker? You know why they're coming after him so hard? They're afraid of him. This is a liberal nightmare to have an African-American conservative representing the state of Georgia, that would inspire people all over this country to look at the Republican Party anew. This ain't about one seat in the Senate. This is about the future of the conservative movement and the Republican Party. And the most intolerant people in America are liberals. When it comes to what they can do to us, there are no rules. It doesn't matter what they do to conservative, they get away with it because the media never holds them accountable. Do you remember Kavanaugh? Do you remember me and Ted on the committee? Do you remember what they tried to do to him? Ruin the man's life, destroy his family, to keep a seat open so they could fill it. It's the most disgusting thing I've seen in Washington. Well, you know what? It didn't work. Trump stayed behind Kavanaugh. Ted and I and everybody on that committee stayed behind Kavanaugh. And their effort to destroy Kavanaugh failed. And what happened? Where did Kavanaugh go? To the Supreme Court. What are they trying to do to Herschel? Back him down. Break his will. Break his back. Whatever it takes to beat him. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to fail. And God help us all if they succeed. Who would want to follow next? So I can tell you right now, if they had beat Kavanaugh, it'd be hard as hell to get somebody else to want to run as a conservative for the Supreme Court. Herschel has stepped out. He has had a life amazing, from being Heisman Trophy winner, country music singer, Food Channel, and the New York Ballet. <laughs> if you can top that, you can finish this speech. 
So here's what I'm here to tell you. Georgia is going to have Herschel's back. You're not going to let them do to this good man what they want to do, which is destroy him. And you know how this movie ends with Herschel Walker? He's going to the United States Senate. In January, when we reconvene, Ted and myself, they're going to call the roll of each state. And when they get to Georgia, in January, they're going to say, starting for the state of Georgia, Herschel Walker. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. You know, before every speech I ever make, I always acknowledge my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he said if you don't acknowledge him, He's not going to acknowledge you. You know, I come knocking on him to let me in. I also want to acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this race with me. And I want to acknowledge all our elected officials that's here with me because uh, we're in a fight right now. So I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. And thank you so much because this is a fight that we're going to win. But first, before I tell you guys why I'm running and why I'm going to win, I, I got to do a little house cleaning. Because uh, it has been amazing to me that on the pulpit in some uh, churches, they've been preaching about me. Can you believe it? You know, uh, Senator Reverend Warnock, on Sunday he was upset because we have exposed his evil doing at Columbia Towers. Where he was taking advantage of, uh, you know, people uh, less fortunate, taking taking advantage of people that had a mental illness, and uh, a lot of our old veterans, he was taking advantage of them. So he's been called out on it, and in his uh, on his or at the pulpit, he said that because we're talking about him, we're talking about Jesus. And he's no, no, no. And he said because we're talking about him, we're talking about Dr. King. But we need to let uh, Senator Reverend Warnock know that he's not Jesus and he's not Dr. King. You know, this is on him for what he's doing. And God doesn't want your job. You got to clean your own self up by being born again. And that's what you got to do to clean your own self up. But I want to get to the reason I'm here and the reason you're going to vote for me because I'm going to be your champion. And uh, the reason I'm going to tell you that is, as I tell everyone, I was this poor, I just found out I was black the other day. I was this poor black kid from middle Georgia. Uh, and as I tell everyone, I was born in this little town called Wrightsville, Georgia, that if you got one year to live, you move there. That year is forever. Same old, same old. And my mom said I was big bone. Man, I was fat. Y'all know who that is. And I used to have a speech impediment. A lot of people don't know this. For four years of my life, I never spoke in a classroom. Four years of my life, I never went out for recess. I was bullied a great deal, and I was afraid of everything. But the grace of God, God had a plan for me. Yes, he had a plan. God had a plan for me. That he got me doing push-ups, got me doing sit-ups, he got me working out, and all of a sudden I get a scholarship to go to the, the University of Georgia. Yes. And then I got a chance to win a Heisman Trophy. And then I got a chance to be on the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. Think about it. There's no snow here in Georgia, and I made the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. This black kid from middle Georgia made the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. And then I played 15 years of pro football, which is unheard of for a football player. But that wasn't the reason God had me doing that. That wasn't the reason why. Because he said, I wasn't ready yet. And then he had to break me. And I didn't understand this because all of a sudden somebody said I had a mental problem. Think about this. And I'm like, wait a minute, Herschel got a mental problem? And I'm talking about my seventh, third person, but I know that. And all of a sudden I realized that something was wrong, so I decided to go to this hospital out in California, and I went to this hospital, and I go, whoa, these people here are crazy. <laughs> yes, they are crazy in here. But because I became born again, I started realizing that we all fall short of the glory of God. 
And what we have to do, though, what we have to do is we got to ask for forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, and then he move us up. And all of a sudden, I got released from that hospital, and my life blossomed again. And all of a sudden, I built this company that became one of the largest minority-owned food service companies in the United States of America. No, and then I got a chance to spend 15 years with our military trying to remove the stigma of mental health. So I would go to a base every three weeks trying to remove the stigma of mental health. And then God said, now nah, he's ready. So now nah, he's ready because he's getting ready to go up against a man that I say he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a man that sits on a pulpit and he says words like America need to apologize for its whiteness. He said words like America, the problem they have is racism. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The book I read, the book I read, it said that a house divided cannot stand. And the book I read, I can tell you God doesn't know about your skin color. He knows about your heart. And I started thinking, no, 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 I started thinking, now what is going on with this country today that we started to try to divide people, to separate people, to, to get people arguing with each other, get people fighting with each other. And I said, all they're trying to do is get your vote. All they want you to do is vote for them, and then they, what they were going to do, and I've been telling this story for a while, and y'all got to stay with me on this story here. Because this story is about this man that died early in life. I don't know if you heard about it. This man died early in life, and as he got to heaven, St. Peter met him at the pearly gates. And as St. Peter met him at the pearly gates, St. Peter says, Sir, you're here a little bit early right now, and your name ain't on the road. So you're the only one in history that's going to get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. So I'm going to take you to heaven, and I'm going to take you to hell, and you get to determine where you like to be. So he puts him in his elevator and he takes him all the way down the hill and there's a party going on. He sees some of his friends down there, he's having a great time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, you ready to go, you ready to go? And the guy said, I gotta leave now. He said, yeah, you got a decision to make. He puts him in his elevator, takes him all the way up to heaven and he get to heaven and there's people floating around on clouds, having a good time, just talking. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter came to him and said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this, I think I want to go to hell. Said, that seemed like my type of place. St. Peter said, you sure? He said, yeah. So he puts him in his elevator, sends him all the way back down to hell. Now and the doors open up and it's hot. People are crying, they're miserable. And the guy goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of hours ago when I was here, there was a party going on. And Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. <laughs> And the reason I'm telling you that people ask me, people ask me why I'm running. And people say, you know, you shouldn't be running. And I said, no, 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 I should be running. Because when God has blessed me, it's time for me to bless others. I've heard, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And that's what it's time to do right now. It's time for me to stand up. It's time for me to stand up for our men and women in blue because the guy I'm running against that called them names like bullies and thugs. And right now the morale is down. You got to see the recruitment is down. And now this is the hardest time in America to be a law enforcement officer because right now people have lost respect for our law enforcement. And I said, no, 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 not on my watch. Not on my watch. We're going to support our men and women in blue. We're going to support our men and women in blue. And now all of a sudden, I, I said, it, uh, I said, don't let them take you down in that elevator tell you, let's defund the police. No, no, no. That's a dumb idea. I can't say dumb because I got them running for politics. That's a stupid idea. I'm not, <laughs> that's a dumb idea. But because I remember the other night when I was leaving my campaign office not too long ago, it was starting to get dark outside. I happened to see this officer pull over this car. And as this officer is getting out of this car, getting out of his car, walking up to this little white car with dark windows, I started getting nervous and thinking, oh, geez, I hope nothing happens. Because, you know, now we got iPhones. We're always videotaping things. We're always showing people the mean side. We don't show them the whole picture. And all of a sudden, I'm getting nervous. Say, I hope nothing happened. I hope nothing happened. We got to reform the full police. And then I said, wait, wait, wait. They're taking me down in that elevator. Why don't we reform the citizen, too? Because why don't they show respect to that officer? That officer have a family. They have a family, too. They want to go home. We all want to go home safe. So we need to reform each other. We need to learn how to get along. We need to learn how to respect each other. But because we got leaders in Washington that have gotten weak, they got us in defunding the police by taking us down in that elevator, telling us this isn't you, Norman, and I'm telling us it's not. 
What we need to do is get the right people in the office that's going to say, no, 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 I'm not going to put up with it anymore. And as my father told me, when he told me no, he meant no. And when I got too big for my britches and I decided I was going to stand up, he said, if you don't like the rules underneath my roof, you leave my house. So maybe it's time to get leaders in Washington that say, if you don't like the rules of the United States of America, why don't you leave? Hey, we're not keeping you here. We're not keeping you here. And then, then, then the guy I'm running against, you saw what he said about our military. He said you can't serve the military and God at the same time. And I'm like, where is this guy from? Where is he from preaching this on the pulpit? Why is he not trying to say the military is the reason we're the greatest country in the world? We got people that have sacrificed, sacrificed every day their lives to give us the freedoms and liberties that we have. And yet we have them in Washington trying to bring pronouns into our military. Yes, pronouns. Like, what the heck is a pronoun? I'm sick and tired of this pronoun stuff. I can tell you grenades know nothing about pronouns. Bullets don't know what color your skin is, and they, we're talking about pronouns. We need to have them out doing push-ups and sit-ups like I used to do. Get them ready for war, because I can tell you right now, China, Iran, and Russia are not talking about pronouns. They're over here laughing at us. Y'all saw what happened in Afghanistan. We show weakness. We show weakness, and we had 13 service members that was killed, and no one has mentioned that. No one is talking about that because we show weakness by showing what we're going to do. We left but millions, billions of equipment over in, uh, in Afghanistan. No one said a word about it. And this was so funny about this. I think Senator Cruz mentioned it. Raphael Warner has spent almost $100 million against me already. Can you believe that? And the race is tied, or I'm in the lead, or he's in the lead, which meant he don't know how to spend his money, so why is he spending your money? He don't know how to spend your money, he not quit spending your money. And then we need to go to this. The reason he voted four times against the Keystone Pipeline, think about this, four times against the Keystone Pipeline, Senator Cruz was telling you all the things he voted against. He hasn't stood in front of you and told you that's the reason we're in the mess we're in right now, because he want to continue to be with Joe Biden. Four times against the Keystone Pipeline, me Meaning we don't have our own energy. We're asking from our enemies to give us energy. That's the reason your utility bill is high right now. I don't know if you looked at your utility bill. That's the reason your gas bill is high right now. That's the reason now Thanksgiving, not the Thanksgiving you used to have. Now you're looking for what are you going to do for Thanksgiving? You're going to either gonna have a turkey or chicken. I don't mind you have chicken because I sell chicken, so buy a lot of chicken. <laughs> but right now, that's what Senator Warnock has done to us right now. Four times, and let me tell you about enemies. He don't know the definition of an enemy. An uh, enemy do not like you. An uh, enemy don't like you. That's the definition of enemy. But they don't know the definition of a woman either. They're discussing that. What's a woman? Well, I can tell you the definition of a woman because it's written in a book I read. And it said a man and a woman. And the woman came from the rib of a man. And that's the reason I'm going to tell you right now. Get men out of women's sports. That's what I want to do. Get men out of women's sports. Whereas Senator Warnock, Senator why not vote it to put men in women's sports? Let me tell you what. You don't want Herschel Walker competing against your daughter, do you? You don't want me to compete against your daughter, but yet that's what it way that voted right now. It's time for us to get leaders in Washington to stop this. This is make common sense. Men shouldn't be in women's sports. Let's get them out. That's not what we're about right now. We need leaders in Washington that are going to become a leader, not become a follower. We don't need followers there. That's what Senator Warnock has become a follower. He continued to have his bike bent and let them ride in his by telling him who to vote for and what to do. Well, that don't happen with Herschel Walker. They asked me why am I running. I said I'm running because I'm sick and tired of this. I'm running because I'm sick and tired of this. Right now, you know, they've been talking about, oh, they going after your kids too? See, no one mentioned that. They going after your kids. Remember, they call you a domestic terrorist. Because you want to find out what your kid is being taught. Instead of teaching your kids about math and arithmetic, they trying to teach them about the CRT. They're teaching him how to spare. They want to teach him about gender ideology. And then, yet, our kids, now, all the things that are happening in the schools, you know, they talked about it. 87,000 RS agents. Let me tell you, why don't you get somebody to protect our school, put an officer in each school, and get rid of those 87,000 RS agents that's going to come after you? That's what they're going to do. They're going to come after you. Do people not know that? I was like, guys, this is less than two years. Senator Warnock hadn't been there two years. And y'all see where we're at today. And now you ask 
asking for you to give us six more years. I'm not sure we can put up with that. And y'all, hey, he's that smooth talking guy, isn't it? That's the reason I call him that wolf in sheep clothing. My father told me about people like this. He said, them well dressed, slick talkers, you can't trust them. And y'all saw him in a debate, did you not? And he thought he can beat Herschel Walker in a debate. Let's be real. Do y'all really think that? You know, I even told him, I said, I'm going to show up. I'm this old country boy. I'm, you know, I don't know that much. You such a smart preacher and you can do all that with all your Bible verses that you think you can throw on me. But all of a sudden I became the adult in the room because I took him to school. Did I not take him to school? Because what happened there? He became, he became, he became Scooby-Doo at one moment in that debate. Did y'all see that? Y'all may not have noticed that, but I noticed it because I was sitting over there looking at him like this. His eye got real big because they asked him, they said, sir, will you vote for Joe Biden in 2024? He go, oh, 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 no. And I'm like, yeah, see, now, now he don't want to talk. He don't want to talk because he that one trick pony because they, his people gave him things to say. And now since he has to answer and now calling him on it, he don't know what else to say. He's the senator. He need to say the truth. The truth is he hasn't done right by Georgia. The truth is if done right by Georgia, we wouldn't be in the mess we in. Do y'all want to go out on the streets at night, late at night because of the crime? And that's because of Senator Why not? Because he believes in releasing people from prison. Can you believe that? Release people from prison. Like, wait a minute. What is going on with this man? Think he can release people from prison and then no cash bail. Whoa, he has really lost it, has he not? Hey, people got to be responsible for what they do. Even in the book I read, which is the Bible, I'm not sure if he's reading that book because he's saying all the stuff that's not written in the Bible because he's not reading the whole paragraph. It was written in my Bible. It was about Adam and Eve. And God said, from this place here, you have total freedom. But if you touch and eat from this tree right here, you'll surely die. They were held to responsibility. So that's what we got to hold people to responsibility when they commit a crime. And that's what is happening right now. Not release people from jail. Do I believe in prison reform? Yes, I do. But the way you have to do it is you educate them. You get them prepared to get out of prison so they can go back in society and be productive. You don't just let them out just because you let them out because you want them to be free. No, because we become prisoners now in our own home. Well, that won't happen on my watch. That's not going to happen on my watch. And I can tell you that right now. And then, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He got a lot of stuff that he's done since he's been there two short years. Y'all think y'all going to give him any more time. It is time for us to say, you don't know it's time for you to go. If you need, don't let the door hit you in the bite side as you leave our room. This office don't belong to the Senate or not. It's belong to the people of Georgia. This is not, this is not about the government. This is about the people. It's not we the government. It's we the people. So the people got to get back to it. But guys, we got to stand up by getting out on December the 6th and voting. We got to get out on December the 6th or you can early vote. And you know uh, Senator Cruz talked about it. If you do a vote 10 times, I'm not telling you vote 10 time but get 10 friends to vote get 10 friends to vote but if you don't have no friends make some friends get them to go vote too that's what you got to do we got to win this election because this election is one of the most important elections of our life it's right now because they will change this country if we don't get it right this time because that's what they want to do they don't believe that we should be first can you believe right now they don't like this slogan the slogan america first i'm like what in the world don't you live in america shouldn't you want america to be first if you live here that's what's so funny i'm like, hey, I'm like Ricky Bobby. If I'm not first, I don't want to be last. That's where y'all are. And we're good people. We're good people, and we have to show them we're good people. But you know what's so funny? But we're a family. We're all a family here. Because don't, don't don't let Senator listen to Senator why not talking about your color. Because, you know, they've been calling me names. Can you believe that? Hey, they called me a coon not long ago. Y'all saw that? Oh, yes, they did. I couldn't believe it either. And then but they don't know this. They don't know this. I'm from the country. I'm from the country. I'm saying a coon is one of the smartest animals out there. So if you're going to call me something, call me by something that's going to hurt my feelings. What hurt my feelings is the crime in the streets. What hurt my feelings is the high gas prices. What hurt my feelings is what you're trying to bring into my school to hurt my kids. What hurt my feelings is to have this border wide open. So call me names if you want to call me. What I want you to do, Senator Warnock, is be a good senator, which you had not been that either. So it's time for you to get out of that people's seat because it's time for people to put a champion there. And that champion became Herschel Walker. God said, I'm prepared you for this moment right here you're not that football player no 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 you're not that football player i thought i thought 
thought he was preparing me for that football player, but he wasn't preparing me for that football player. He was preparing me to win this Senate over Senator Warnock because he said, this guy's going to come up. He's going to come up and be on the pulpit preaching all those venomous, terrible things. That's what he said. I didn't say it. He said that. He's going to be there in the Senate doing the thing with Joe Biden. And Joe Biden has been proven, what, oh, that he voted the wrong way, going the wrong direction, what, 70% of the time wrong, headed in the wrong direction, but yet Senator Warnock still voted for him. I even saw a commercial where Senator Warnock is running on a track the wrong way. It's like, sir, you got to run the right way. You can't run that way. You got to run the right way. And then he said, to be a senator, you have to know some things. Well, what I do know is you haven't done a good job since you've been in Washington. What I do know is you voted four times with Joe Biden. What I do know, you voted for men and women's sports. What I do know is you are a terrible senator. Senator, everybody know that. You are being a terrible job, so you get an F. Your F meaning leave people office today. Hey, I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to say God is good, is he not? God is good, and God is good not some of the time, but all of the time. So I'm going to promise you this. When I go to Washington, Jesus Christ going with me. And he can block, I can run. So we got a good thing happening. God bless you guys. Thank you guys. Now.